Packers and the 49ers. Enjoy this one. Raheem Mostert has the hat trick in the first half. Mostert has four rushing touchdowns. Feels great, baby. It is intercepted. Feels super, baby. The five-time Super Bowl champions are going back to Miami. So just how unlikely was this San Francisco run to a Super Bowl? Well, quite. You remember last season, Jimmy Garoppolo tore his ACL three games into the year. Man. Ironically, it was against the Chiefs. They finished the year 4-12, and 12, their fourth straight losing season. But they, they were able to draft super high, and they took Nick Bosa number two overall, and he's had an unbelievable impact. San Francisco is just the third team to make the Super Bowl after making a top two pick in the previous draft. And that attention to bolstering their defense has paid all kinds of dividends. They improved their scoring defense by almost eight points a game from last season to this. That is the best differential in the NFL this year. And on the other end of the ball, they reached the Super Bowl by running it. They've rushed on 75% of their offensive plays this postseason, third highest percentage ever entering a Super Bowl. So what they've accomplished here has been nothing short of extraordinary. They're just the third team to make this game a season removed from winning four or fewer, according to the Elias Sports Bureau. They're the first to do it after four straight 10 loss seasons. And so obviously Garoppolo has been a huge part of that. Without him, they were awful. With him, they win a lot of games. But ironically, the injury, and I'm not, please do not get this wrong, I'm not comparing Nick Bosa to Tim Duncan. But it does remind me a little bit of the situation, uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember in basketball, where David Robinson and the Spurs were a really good team. Robinson got hurt, knocked out for the year. They wound up getting the number one pick. They got Duncan, and they won the championship the next year and five times over the course of time. If Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't go down with that injury, are the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl this year? No. They couldn't draft like they did. And we've seen what the impact of the draft is on this football team. For as much as we get enamored with offense, because Dan does great tapes, this defense is built to last for a long time. And it's because of that Jimmy G injury. The, the Jimmy G injury allowed John Lynch to get his Simeon Rice and Warren set. That's there the reality. He, there you because. Go. That injury allows him to go get Bosa, and then they go make the move to forward. They already had the inside pieces, and now he gets his defensive line that he played behind in Tampa Bay. So, no, they're not in the Super Bowl without it. Not only that, they don't get, they more than likely don't get Debo Samuel in the second round no where doubt. they got him either. And so, the, the blessing in disguise yeah. is the Jimmy G knee injury because they were a better team than 4-12, and 12, and that injury allowed them to become better as a younger football team. And then you go get Bosa. And then you trade for G D Ford. And then there's your Warren Sapp and Simeon Rice. Yeah, you like, called it unintentional tanking in the meeting this morning. Which <laughs> I mean, glass really half floor, right? We yeah. saw this also when Paint Manny hurt his neck and they got Andrew Luck. And they were able to get their franchise quarterback moving forward. Sometimes, you know, things happen like this and you just have to take advantage of it. And now what that allowed them to do is get those outside pass rushers. Now they play complementary football. That now they can play a team game that's built around a running game and a defense that you can't just get fast scores on. The other thing I would bring up, and I'd be interested in your take on this, is the the fact that Shanahan stuck with Robert Sala at the defense coordinator mm. spot. A lot of people were calling for his job, and people said he couldn't get it done, but they trusted in their own organization to get him the pieces that he needed to have success. I think it's important to know that Kyle Shanahan grew up in the NFL. Like, his yeah. dad was a longtime coach in the NFL, so Kyle realized that the NFL was really about dudes, players. And he realized that their front just didn't have good enough guys. And once that, once, like when you know that Robert Sala is a good coach and you know that he's got good scheme, he can communicate and teach, as long as John Lynch was going to get him guys, that that defense would rise up. And that's the thing, like John Lynch, basically every single move that John Lynch has made, he's hit on. Yeah. Quan Alexander, he hit on. Traded for D Ford, hit on. Went and got Sherm, he hit on that. Stuck with Jimmy G, too, as well. Like, they paid Jimmy G early, stuck with Jimmy G, and didn't use one of those early picks on a quarterback. So, to, to your point, like, Kyle trusting Robert Sala as a good coach as long as he got good players. A lot of what we talked about earlier about being built for a dynasty, that's the reason. For me, it's John Lynch. Like, I know, we, I know we're going to continue having this conversation, but John Lynch deserves a tremendous amount of credit for being able to identify that there needs to be stability first identifying the problems, fixing them. And look, Quan Alexander got injured, and they, they also had Dre Greenlaw, and the same pick. type of player, 
to come in just in case we go down a but guy it's, it's about and he's like, been effective as well. It's about making well. courageous decisions no as doubt. a GM, too. Like, having the short-term vision and long-term. Yep. Signing Richard Sherman was not a like a glamorous signing. Going and trading for D. Ford was not yep. – paying Jimmy G when they paid him yeah. – was not well received and John Lynch has pulled all the right strings. Well, we talk about culture and they set a culture, right? And I remember going out there and doing a financial literacy program and these guys played hard and they built their roster from the back end up, right? Because they had a lot of young players that they developed and they became the back end of their roster. Now they have tremendous depth. Mm -hmm. That's why when McKinnon goes down, it's no problem. That's why when uh, Coleman goes down, it's no problem. It's next man up because these guys have experience in playing in big, in big meaningful games. Let's carry on with a little bit of draft talk, but this one all about LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. And it seems that like he solidified the number one overall pick at? in the NFL draft. He went to LSU. <laughs> but will that pick be made by the Bengals? In response to an ESPN report that Cincinnati would not trade the number one pick, Bengals director of player personnel Duke Tobin had this to say. He said, quote, that's news to me. I don't know that any decision has been made for what we're going to do in April. We're still early in the process, Tobin said. We certainly haven't had any meetings to determine that at this point those will be meetings that we'll have as we go through the process Dan Orlovsky you have said that the Bengals are so in love with Joe Burrow that there's absolutely no way that they don't pick him number one but here we hear from a, a Bengals personnel member who's saying maybe that's not the case no I think the Bengals love Joe Burrow I think the Bengals see Joe Burrow as a franchise changer not just a really good quarterback because they have a quarterback need and he's the next pick but a guy that they think there's something different about him. He's a special player. He does things that we can't coach. The handling of the moment, his ability. Here's the thing. Joe Burrow doesn't miss. He doesn't have misses. And they look at that, I believe they look at that as something that this team is close. They're, they think that they're better than the NFL or the world thinks that they are. And they're just their big-time quarterback away. I, they, there's no way Cincinnati trades this pick and does not take Joe Burrow. I, I, that you're probably right. Let me throw a scenario out there. there we we just talked about how Nick Bosa completely changed, revolutionized the San Francisco 49ers. Do people or view Chase Young as a prospect on that level, like a Bosa? Is he that good? I, I think absolutely. And, and many people that I've talked to from the NFL standpoint have said that, yes, uh, Chase Young is Nick Bosa-type game-changing. Mm. And here's the thing, too, about it. He's somebody that would come in maybe in that home state of Ohio and have an impact that could make you say, do they bring in Tua as well? well that's the question. Is, is would you, if they could find a way to get one of the other quarterbacks See, and You don't get even Chase have to ask me. Yes. Yes. Look, I, for as much as I love Joe Burrow, think about the conversations we had about Tua. Think about it. Like, the fact that you could possibly – get a franchise change in DN and a franchise change in quarterback as opposed to just getting one guy, I would entertain that possibility. Now, I know it's, it's a lot of scenarios that would have to play out, but there is no way in hell if I could get Chase, if there is a glimmer of the possibility of me getting Chase Young and Tua as opposed to getting two is better than one. Why are you shaking your head? Because organizations like the Cincinnati Bengals, like the New York Jets, like the Detroit Lions can't risk the fact that Tua can come in here and not be a healthy player. They have to make sure that they get a sure thing. We always talk about the quarterback being the most important position on the field. If they can get a guy that's going to be a borderline yellow jacket like Gettleman would say, you have to make sure that you solidify that pick and, hey, say, you know what? If I can get a pass rusher, I go get a Donk Way. I go out and get a R.J. Barrett. I go out and buy me a pass rusher, but I'm going to make sure I have a cheap young franchise quarterback, especially in that division with Lamar Jackson and a lot of those young quarterbacks that's going to be there for the next 15 years. Yeah, I said Detroit. <laughs> no, so I'm I from mean, there. It's appealing. I mean, it's appealing, yeah. but I just can't sit there. Like, here's the thing. You don't have anybody opposite Chase Young. There is no pass rusher that you have opposite you know, Chase Atkins Young. But, like, Chase Young's going to, you know, command a lot of attention. He doesn't have a D Ford. And I just go, passing on that quarterback after that season, yep. yeah. whew, that – Good luck if you're wrong. Here's what's interesting. Real quick. Joe Burrow, our best season ever. 
We talked about Tua in the same vein. Oh, yeah. I agree. And generational like, type. Yeah, we arm. did. We talked about the but same he, vein. But can he stay he healthy? Injured. The risk That's piece the, is interesting. He's speculating he's yelling, him got an indoor a facility, man. He's going to freeze his hip off. I'm doing the best I can. Still to come on Get Up, the Super Bowl tale of the tape. Who is better? Marcus goes position by position when we return. And James Harden's historically bad night for the Rockets. Houston has a problem. Is it fixable? You've got questions. We've got answers. Get Up. On ESPN. H-Town, showing us around by sound.